All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we have a question was sent to me by one of you. I'm not sure really if he is a Christian or not. Uh, and the question is as the following. Actually, it's a video. I'm going to play a part of it so we can see what was the question. This is supposedly a debate between uh, Shabir Ali and uh, uh, David Wood. And the Muslims, they are very excited for what happened in this debate. And the video here in front of me, it says, uh, David Wood's whole career ruined by one question in a debate. I mean, what career and what ruined? And what? You know, the Muslims are the most funny creatures ever. Let us hear and laugh together. Question is, how do we understand the claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified on a cross? tree or pole in light of Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 22 and 23 and Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 which states that whoever is hung on a tree or pole or cross is cursed thank you well uh, I'd say you're about I'm not going to play what David Wood is going to say this is not really my interest uh, let us see what uh, Shabir Ali say you know for me my job is to get the most busted I agree that Jesus was righteous, and uh, I don't agree that he was a curse. Um, and the Deuteronomy passage actually refers to a person who was hung justly for his crimes. So he's under the curse of God, according to Deuteronomy. Paul misunderstood this, and though Jesus was unjustly hung, uh, Paul said uh, Jesus became a curse, but, but he's a curse for us. But that is problematic, because as Dr. William Lane Craig uh, asserts, you cannot just simply say that Jesus got up and, and rose from the dead on his own. God had to raise him from the dead. But as I pointed out to him, for God to raise him from the dead, God has to want to raise him. Okay. Well, first of all, what does this have to do with the question? You see, because those Muslims, they have nothing to say. What does this have to do with the question about who raised who? The question is, was Jesus crucified for he is cursed? Was he cursed? Let us read together. I'm not going to, uh, to, uh, to play uh, what David Wood says because, you know, some people, they think I'm attacking David. I'm not. You know, I correct people. It doesn't matter who they are. According to, uh, to every version of the Bible, he who hang on the tree or curse is cursed by God. First of all, this is a false statement coming from the mouth of the Muslims. It doesn't say that. What it says is that the one who hang on the tree for a crime he did, not whoever hang on the tree, which means if somebody, somebody, the one who hang on the tree supposedly is a criminal, somebody he commit a crime, and he deserved the death punishment. So the curse here are for somebody who he is a criminal. So the Muslims, they always they try and they play their own game. And look what they say. Therefore, if the Bible is correct and Jesus was truly crucified, does not that make Jesus cursed and false Messiah? Dr. Shabir Ali manifests the truth. First of all, if Shabir Ali says that this is Jesus is a false Messiah, that means Muhammad is a false, false Muhammad too. Because Muhammad he confirmed the Quran saying that he did not crucify him, which means he's speaking about the same person. So this is a very stupid statement from the Muslims when they say, if this is really what happened, that means the Messiah is a cursed Messiah. The Quran confirmed that Allah, he hang on the tree someone instead of Jesus. And that was not really a tree, supposedly in the Quran, is a cross. So in order to understand this, and the Muslims will not be allowed to play with us, let us go and read together. This is the verses in the Bible and if a man have committed a sin worthy of death so this is about who the one who is the one we are talking about is a person who commits sin Jesus commit no sin so this is not about Jesus the curse he have nothing to do with Jesus so then what uh, what Paul he mean I mean uh, how Jesus became a curse for us it's a curse it's a curse to kill an innocent person. This is the first curse. When you kill an innocent person, you yourself, you will be punished for that. This is why actually this verse in the front of us. You will die. Sin bring death. 
Jesus commit no sin, so he don't deserve death. So it was sin to put Jesus on the cross himself. That is the first curse on us. The same as the curse happened to Adam. Adam was cursed too. If we go to the book of Genesis, we will see that God says to Adam, surely you will die. That is a curse. And this is why we as a Christians and all mankind, we die for because Adam, he commits sin. This is the first sin was done by the man. But not because Adam only is a sinner, we are sinners too. And this is why we, all of us, we, are, we die. So the curse is the curse of death. It doesn't matter how. In the cross, or you die even in the bed, still you are cursed. But the Muslims, they try to deny that. But the fact, even the Muslims, they believe in this. The Muslims are the same as somebody. He put eyeglasses. Uh, 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 but th those eyeglasses is the same you use for blind men. You know, they are not really, will not make them see anything. And they think that they are the one who have vision of everything. Do you think really the Christian believe that Jesus is cursed? Is that really what you think in your mind that this is what Paul he was saying that he is cursed? If we go, before we go back to the Bible, just to show you what the Muslims believe. This is chapter 5, verse number 33. This is the curse of Allah, supposedly, in the one who commit a crime, he should be crucified. And his legs and his hands will be cut off, because Allah, he loved to be torturing people. Do you see it? That is a curse. He will be punished, he will be crucified, he is, or cut his hand and cut his legs, and then he will be disgraced now and in the hereafter. Now and the here. This is a curse. Which means the, the punishment of death should happen only for those who commit crimes. And the Quran confirmed in different place that if Muhammad he commit a crime, which is invention the Quran or invention the, the uh, uh, like making uh, uh, inventing sorry the word the, the Quran uh, uh, Allah will punish him and he will cut his orta and this is exactly what we see in the Quran that if Muhammad he invented Quran or he tried to invent the Quran Allah will hold him from his right hand and he will cut his artery so this is a curse if we go in the Quran right now we read together the following. Why Muhammad himself is going to be killed? Because if he invented the Quran, which means the curse will be on him, he will be he will be dead, he will die in a very certain way, and then he is going to be humiliated in the hill after hereafter. Chapter 69, verse number 46. Translation of Yusuf Ali. And if the messenger were to invent any saying of our, in our name, we should certainly size him by his, his right hand, and we should certainly then cut off his artery of his heart, etc. And, you know, so this is a curse of God. This is a punishment of God. We'll do it to Muhammad. And here you will see here, it's, it's continued like speaking about this curse. What will happen exactly if Muhammad, he did that? And later we find that Muhammad, he did that exactly. Muhammad, he invented Quran. And supposedly, his God Allah, he cut his order. Read with me carefully. The Prophet in his element of uh, in which he died, used to say, O oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my orta is being cut off from that poison. So now why Muhammad he die in such a, in such a way of death? Muhammad was not an innocent person. The Quran confirmed that if Muhammad is a person who invented Quran, Allah is going to cut his orta and this is exactly how Muhammad he die. 
So is that the same story for Jesus? The whole Bible, including the Quran, confirmed that Jesus is a righteous man, at least for the Muslims, as a righteous man. For us, he is God, our Lord. So it's a very stupid and it's very naive to say what the Muslim they say in their comment or in their video that according to the Bible, every version of the Bible, he who hang on the tree or cross is cursed by God. This is false. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that the one who hang on the cross for a crime and you Muslims are a bunch of liars. Now we go and see what Paul he said which the Muslim they play with it. This is an image the Muslims they made from the Old Testament and from the New, New Testament. You will see here in the image, in the statement it says here, that the Messiah, he redeemed us. He redeemed us. So he is the person who is doing redeem. He is not the person is being punished. The Messiah, he says, I lay down myself and nobody can take that from me. Nobody can take myself from me. I lay down myself. So here, when the, the Muslims speak about Jesus was cursed, taking a statement out of there, its meaning, because all of us, we knew what does that mean exactly, that Jesus, he died for us in the cross. We are the one who is cursed by God, as in the book of Genesis, where God said to Adam, if you do this, you die. So we have a curse of us, regardless if we hang on the tree or we don't hang on the tree, we die. Die, death is a curse. Every human being have one end. It is death. Why? Because this is a curse of sin. So what the verse here in the front of us saying is very simple. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. From the curse. So the curse is in who? Is on the sinners. What Jesus did, he redeemed us from the curse. What does that mean? That he is the one who sacrificed himself to us instead of us, the cursed one, to be there. He is the one who redeemed us by that act. So all what Paul is saying, that always the criminals is the one who hang on the cross. Criminals who commit sin. But by having Christ on the cross... Cross became a blessing for us, and cross became a salvation. As simple as that. Someone says to me, I never saw a Christian able to answer this. Why is that? All of Christianity is about this. I mean, have you ever heard anything about Christianity except that Jesus, he saved the Christians by his cross? All the books, all the verses, all the, from, the, from the first uh, word in John to the last verse in John is speaking about that and Paul himself he repeat that many times and here Paul is saying nothing new unless you want to understand it the way you like so the Messiah he redeemed us because he is an honest in blood who commit no sin a person who is sinner he cannot redeem you, for he is himself, he deserved death anyway. This is why, if we ask the Muslims, why Jesus is a person have no father? They have no answer. I mean, what the point? I challenge any Muslim to tell me, what is the point that Jesus have no father? What does that mean exactly? He will say to me, Adam have no father. Adam, have, Adam is a sinner. Adam is a sinner and he is not born. How come every human being after Adam and Eve are born. You see, Adam is not born. Eve is not born. Every person after that is born of Eve and Adam. How come only Jesus have no father? Simply the answer is there in the front of you. For he is the person who have no sin who is going to redeem us. So he took the curse which is on us, which is death. And if you go to the verse speaking about that the one who hang on the on the on the on the uh, uh, in the tree, you will see it says there clearly that the one who commits sin. <laughs> and Paul is saying clearly that the Messiah have no sin. So remember, remember guys, uh, uh, Paul, he himself is a Jew, and the Jew, 
As a Jew, he feel guilty for he is one of those who used to go out after the Christians to kill them. We do not need to forget that. So Paul is saying, the Messiah, he redeemed us yet, and he is coming to save us, yet we killed him. He took, he took the curse from us. Even in the cross, Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. This is all what Paul is saying. You know, in order to understand a belief, you, you read the book, you don't quote a verse. Otherwise, you are being a stupid fool. Christianity is not a verse. We take a verse from here and a verse from there and we put them in the front of each other and we say, here we go. So that's mean Jesus is a criminal. The whole Bible says that Jesus commit no sin and every Muslim agree in the Quran chapter 19 verse 19 it says that Jesus is the Holy Son. He's holy. The Quran confirmed that Jesus is from the most close people to Allah. Then how he can be sinner and he is the fake Messiah, yet he is in heaven. So the Muslims, when they speak, they insult their Quran and they accuse their prophet that he is a liar. Because if this video here is saying, is that mean the Messiah was a false Messiah? You see it with me? This was the Muslim statement. That means the Muslims are insulting their false prophet Muhammad, stating that he is lying. This is not the true Messiah. But yet the Quran witnessed that this is the true Messiah. If we go here, it says in chapter 3, verse number 45, I hope that Abdul, they can read with me. Behold, the angels said, O Mary, Allah has given thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be, actually he doesn't say his name will be, his name is Christ Isa, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter of the company of those nearest to Allah. So how the Muslims they accuse that based on that statement that Jesus must be a false Jesus, that because you are stupid. That because you Muslims, you have no idea what are you talking about. You are stupid about your religion and you are stupid about our belief. I never saw a Muslim he understand what is written in his book and what is written in our book. Even your book witnessed that the same Messiah, because remember the Quran is the one who says that they crucify him not. Speaking about what? Speaking about the same Jesus we're speaking about. All the Bible is speaking about a person who he is the resurrection the Messiah said I am the resurrection and the life what does that mean David you know what his name uh, Shabir Ali he said oh, we know that God will resurrect him etc resurrect what are you talking about he is the resurrection <laughs> I am the resurrection and I am the life and yet this idiot he quote for us Dr. Campbell who is Dr. Campbell let me know who is he Dr. Campbell they quote two words from a guy and they ignore the rest of his books they take you know the Muslims they they uh, 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 they, they have my videos they cut them pieces and they put words together I did not even say like if I say now Jesus, he is not God unless, and then the Muslim, they will cut the unless and they will put it with something else and they will say, hey, Christian prince is saying Jesus is not God. So the Messiah himself is the resurrection. He is the life and he, whoever believe in me, he live. That what Jesus did. He took the curse of death from our future. Otherwise, we will die. And this death, we are talking about the death is forever. The death is the death of going out of the mercy of God. 
So the whole Bible is speaking about Jesus the Redeemer, the one who saved us. And what Paul is saying is very simple. I mean, how you claim to be Christian, but yet you cannot answer such a naive, easy answer question. I mean, this is very easy. Isn't it all what you know that Jesus came to save you? The one who hang on the cross for a sin, that is not Jesus. Which means crucifixion of Jesus have nothing to do with the curse of sin. It have to do with the curse of death. Sin bring death. Jesus don't deserve to be called sinner. And he himself, he challenged people around him and he said, Who of you can prove you to be a sinner? If we go to John 8, 46, which of you convince me of sin? He is challenging them loud and clear. Who of you? He have no sin. The whole Bible confirmed that and even the Quran confirmed that too. So it's very naive to say to me, I never saw a Christian able to answer this. Why is that? That means you do not know anything about Christianity and you are a false Christian maybe. In the book of Isaiah, it says clearly something clear about the Messiah. But he was wounded for our transgression. See, he was not wounded for his own. He was wounded for that. So this is the curse. The curse of the transgression is to be punished. Jesus, he took that curse from us. As if he is the one who is cursed, for he is taking the penalty and the punishment. But is really, truly, he was really cursed? No. Is that what Paul, he said, that Jesus is cursed? No. It's very stupid to believe that he was cursed. Who can curse God anyway? Every Christian believed that God is the Messiah and the Messiah is God. So who can curse God? <laughs> he was uh, uh, the, the description here in Isaiah described for us exactly what happened to Jesus and it says it clearly that everything happened happened for no reason except he, Isaiah 53 our Redeemer who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. All right. And the Lord hath... That's, that's enough. See, for us, for us, the answer is very simple. The Bible is so clear. But if you decide to be an arrogant person and you are just debating just for the sake of debate, this is your business. But all of us, we knew that there is nowhere in the Bible anyone believed that Jesus was not a pure person who is God came to save us. And the same statement you are quoting for me from Paul is confirming that. So the argument of Muslims is against Islam because they accuse the Messiah based on what they think it is wrong. He is the false Messiah as we saw in the comment of the Muslim videos. And this is supposedly the statement of Shabir Ali. I do not know if this is honest or not. I'm just reading a comment. According to every version of the Bible, he who hang on the tree or a cross is cursed by God. 
This is not what the Bible says. The one who hang on the tree and he commits sin. And Paul, he was, is speaking about Jesus carrying us, carrying our sin from us. So here that the Messiah is replacing us from the penalty. As simple as that. Jesus is not cursed. Jesus himself is the one who cursed someone like Muhammad as an example. He said that prophets will come to you, coming to you in a, in, a, in a cheap in sheep clothes, but in fact they are wolves, and he warned us about them. And he said clearly that such people, they are going to be in hell fire. The same as he cursed anyone who don't give fruits, the same as what happened to the fig tree. The story of the fig tree is not about a tree, and don't think that God, he cared for a tree. The same as the tree in the story of Adam. Do you really think that God cared for a tree? Do you really think that God will be upset because you ate from a tree? The story is deeper than that. But if you are a naive, idiot, stupid donkey, this is your business. Sorry to say so. The story here that you obey or disobey God is not about the tree. And the tree is not what is important to God. The same as the cross. The cross is not important for the Christians. It is not. The cross was always a place of penalty and punishment for criminals. But because the Messiah, he took our place in the cross, which means death. Surely you will die. You will die because of what? Because you commit evil, you commit sin. Death is the curse of God in every human being. And you cannot escape that unless you accept to believe in the Messiah. I am the resurrection, I am the life. He who believe in me, even though he die, he will live. He will take, he will lift the curse from you. No one else. When when the when the person, the Judah, Judah, he, he betrayed the Messiah, he said, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Even the one who betray him, he knew that this is an innocent blood, he commit no crime. And the Bible is full of verses speaking of that. When we speak about someone, we better know who is he before we open our mouth. Muslims always, they have no idea what they are talking about. And this is one of the funny things about them. If we read together this uh, chapter here, let me play a part of it. John 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be... This is exactly what the stupid people do every day when they speak about the Bible. Jesus speak about something, they understand something else. Paul, he speak about something, they understand something else because they are not deep in the spirit and they are far away from God. Jesus said... You cannot do this unless you are born again. The guy, he said, how I can be born again and I am old? Because everyone is speaking about totally different thing. And the Muslim, they cannot understand what Christianity is about because they are people coming from different galaxy. People who believe that God is going to provide them long penis and big vagina. Yet, how you can explain to them what Jesus is about? In order to understand Christianity, you have to level yourself up to the name you are speaking about. In order to understand Islam, I have to downgrade myself to understand Muhammad, the one who is a child molester. I cannot understand Jesus if I am a Muhammadan who don't want to go up to the level of Jesus. I can understand Muhammad easier 
for it is he is a downgraded person he is down 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 it's very easy for a man to go down for we are sinners already so the man here is asking how we can be born again that's impossible look what Jesus said to him born Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the Spirit he my friend in order to understand the Messiah you have to be a person who is trying to level himself with the Spirit and when you reach the point you are in the Spirit of God or let us say you are clearing yourself from the Spirit of sin then you will be able to be close to the Spirit of the Messiah and then you can be born again by water and the Spirit and the water here the water here represent life again that you are going to die under the water and you are going to be resurrected up to the water and you will be living again by being born again with the Messiah. That is something spiritual the Muslim don't examine and because they don't have anything in Islam. Islam is just a religion of rituals. Five times a day we say repeat the same words Muhammad he said 1400 years ago and supposedly his God before him said those words. It's plain rituals, dead have no spirit and their God himself is not even a spirit he is just a body then we continue tend to the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit that is the one is born of the flesh is a flesh and that the one is born of the spirit is a spirit Jesus had the flesh and the spirit in him he is the word of God in the flesh and because of that, he can redeem us, for he took our body. He came to us as one of us. He walked between us to be one of us. This is why he called himself the Son of Man. But all of us, we knew that Jesus is the Son of No Man. Even the Muslim believed that Jesus is the Son of No Man. So how Jesus then can be the Son of Man? A Muslim can say to you, oh, here we go. Jesus saying, I am the Son of Man. But all of us, we knew that this is not what it meant that he is a son literally of a man that is about him coming to you in the flesh of the man in the body of the man in the form of the man marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is every one that is born of the spirit Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever... Must the Son of the Man must be lifted up. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of the Man... But you know the, the 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 problem is if somebody try to understand Christianity by quoting a verse he is fooling himself and if you try to understand Christianity from people who they are Muslims who they cannot even tell us who is Allah and who is Muhammad then you are just being an idiot a Muslim man is the last one to tell you anything they do not know how to answer anything about the religion so how they can answer about ours The answer is always in the Bible, and the Bible is very simple, very clear. From the beginning to the end, Jesus is the Redeemer, and He is not cursed. He took the curse from us, that what it's meant. How simple it can be more than this. I mean, have you ever heard of a Christian saying to you, 
that uh, Jesus was cursed, really. Why? Who is going to curse him anyway? <laughs> this is not what Paul is saying. So it's a very naive statement. And this is why when this guy, he said to me, I never saw anyone answering this question. I said, what? Are you a kid? Why you cannot answer it? Huh? Well, why, you, why you cannot answer it? How you can be a Christian? You can't answer such a thing. You cannot be a Christian and you cannot answer a simple question like this. That means you are far away from, you don't even read the Bible maybe once a year. I don't know if uh, uh, if I uh, if I cover uh, everything, but you know we have tons of uh, reference, speaking of what we said and proving what we said, and everything the Muslim try to come with is just their own conclusion, which Jesus Jesus did not say and Paul did not mean. Those people they are always trying to come to their own conclusion. That conclusion is not exist. This is their conclusion. This is their business. Do we have any Muslim, you know, have the courage to call me? Anyone he have an argument want to say? As usual, they don't know. They know only when we hang up. If we ask the funny, the Muslim, they accuse Jesus to be a false messiah, but yet he is in heaven right now as we speak. This is what they believe in. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Huh? Isn't it funny? Do we have any Muslim have an objection? Anyone dare to say something? All right. So this is a very simple question. It's not really hard to answer. And you should know as a Christian that all Christianity is based on Jesus being the person who redeemed us. And what Paul he was saying that he took the curse from us. It's a curse of death what he's talking about the curse of death not only in the in, in the tree for the, the the curse on the tree or in the in the uh, you know like the punishment of death is always a punishment happened for you are a sinner this is what is confirmed in the Old Testament and this is what happened to Adam and by the way if we compare between the two uh, punishment we will find that the chapter uh, in the Old Testament is speaking about the one who is hanged on the tree the Messiah is not even hanged on the tree he was hanged on the cross so what the, what Paul is talking about is speaking about the penalty and the punishment and the curse which is the death but all of us we knew that Jesus was not even hanged on the tree but what is the similarity between both is you are going to be punished for sin you did but because of the Messiah he have no sin this is why he is a person who owned the title of the Redeemer he redeemed us from the curse so he took the curse from us as simple as that do we have any Muslim have an objection we are here to teach you your book before we teach you our book. Don't even dare to question our book before even you answer a simple question about your God. Who is your God? You don't know. We know who is the Messiah. Who is your God? Who is Muhammad? You see the funny about the Muslim, they say to you, who is John? Shouldn't we ask you who is Muhammad? We know. Open the book of John. Open the, 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 the beginning of John and you will see John speaking about himself. Tell you who is he. 
Who is Muhammad? If we read the whole Quran, we will not understand who is Muhammad. We don't know where he lived. We do not know who is his father. We do not know who is his mother. There is nothing about him in the Quran. They say to you, you have to go and read the Hadith. Then we go to read the Hadith. They say to us, the Hadith is full of lies. They have no idea what their cult is teaching and they try to fabricate interpretation for our Bible. We will not allow them to do so. I hope we gave the answer people they are looking for. And if you, uh, if you are not uh, convinced, feel free to contact me when I am live on air. I will be happy to hear you, especially if you are a Muslim. All right? And you accept our interpretation, you don't accept our interpretation. I mean, who care? At the end of the day, anyone who don't accept the Messiah, he will not be redeemed by the Messiah. It's your choice. At the end of the day, it's a choice you make. Either you take the side of the one who is going to redeem you, or take the side of the one who promise you endless penis, and thousands and thousands of females have no panties. It's your choice. But anyone have a simple brain logic he will know that only satan he promised such a thing 80,000 female without panty i mean isn't it obvious that this is the devil speaking to your private part isn't it obvious that god will not promise you a bracelet in your hand i mean have you ever heard of a god promising a bracelet in heaven that is a promise for somebody is homeless and he have no money all his life, and he is desperate to have some gold. Have you ever heard of God who promised me a couch, a pillow, a fabric, a sheet made from silk? What is that? That is not from God. This is from a furniture store. All the promises Allah He gave you in the Quran, in the heaven, I can get it for you for $500. The pillow and the bed and the couch and the fabric. You are exchanging the true God for $500 deal of furniture. This is what the Muslims do. A God who promised me banana. I can get you as much banana as you want. How much you want? Tell me. You exchange God for banana? God, he promised me banana. You believe it? You have a God who swear by the fig. I mean, couldn't he even swear by something bigger? Watermelon as an example. So don't explain to me my book when you cannot even explain a sentence in your book. And I don't mind. Call me and ask me, and you will be answered. Thank you guys for being here with us. May the Lord bless you all. And until we see you again in a coming video, we say God bless. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. And we see you soon again. Bye-bye.